Hello challengers and charlatans, my name is TB Sky, and there's a new music video out to promote the League of Legends 2018 World Championships, and good lord, a lot of people have been asking me to talk about it, which I completely understand. It is a very interesting video with a lot of very interesting visuals to talk about. Now, uh, looking around, I was not able to find out which studio exactly it was that created this animation for Riot. I do know that it's not an internal production, I'm pretty sure of that. Um, but it shares a lot of the same hallmarks with the um, Legends Never Die video from last year. And so I would suspect that it's probably um, from the same studio. What's interesting about this one is that where Legends Never Die last year mixed uh, media in, in the terms of, like, they're both 3D animations, let's be clear on that, but where Legends Never Die uh, spent a lot of time establishing a kind of a stop-motion puppet show aesthetic, this one, rather, takes the form of something that is much closer to, well, actually something we've talked about on the channel before, something like the Dragon Prince, in terms of being a 3D production that very closely mimics the look and feel of 2D <clears throat> animation, at least in terms of, of, of its texture. The motions, the movements are still very much 3D animated, but it goes to great lengths aesthetically to mimic the look and feel of 2D animation to the point where if you pause at any random frame, you could be forgiven for thinking that it was traditional 2D animation in a, in a very painterly style. And it brings to me to mind also something of the same, at least its approach to textures, brings to mind something of the same as what Riot themselves did with the um, Annie short. Uh, with, I can't remember what it was called, but uh, with, with the Annie Origins short, where they had this completely uh, two-dimensional two moving painting style thing going on. And I feel like I see a little bit of, of the same sort of approach to texture behavior, especially in the faces of the characters, which admittedly are kind of hard to see. Now, I'm going to be spoiling the animation, obviously, for anyone. Yeah, this this particular uh, look, where it's a 3D model that's been painted very carefully um, to have a 2D texture, it's it, it reminds me a little bit of that. And so I, th I feel like Riot are sort of slowly establishing a unified, cohesive aesthetic across uh, their visual media, which is something that actually they kind of haven't had, really. Like, when you look at the history of Riot and League of Legends cinematics of all kinds, they've been kind of all over the map. They've been all over the place. They've been experimenting with a ton of different styles, which is one of the things that's always been kind of fun um, about League of Legends, you know, animated shorts, is that the teams who are working on them have had a lot of freedom to do whatever the heck they wanted with the aesthetic. Um, I remember said Ignite, that particular short, had a very graphical, very interesting 2D animation style. That was nothing like anything else Riot had ever done. More recently, though, it seems like Riot is slowly beginning to establish themselves something like a set of visual hallmarks, like something like a like a like a visual style that is associated with the game, which I think is, is overall a positive move. So, um, we're not gonna go Easter egg hunting in this video. Like, we're not gonna look at oh, here's that's Jarvan's weapon, and here's the the, the weapon from this character that was the and all the little Easter eggs and little references and nods in the background, not really so interested in going through those. Like, I'm, I'm sure someone has already done a breakdown of that on Reddit or something like that, so I don't really want to, I don't really want to go hunting um, for that stuff in particular. Although I will say that it is very, very, very cool that as the driving narrative um, of the short, we're essentially following Ambition, Sensor Gal Galaxy Ambitions, when he's playing for that team, his journey to finally, 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 after so many years, <laughs> claiming the Summoner's Cup that had been denied to him, especially by Figa. Like, that's a really, like, that was an incredibly compelling storyline last year, and it's therefore a very clever move on the part of the animators to, okay, so let's just make him the main character, let's recount what happened last year in an extremely dramatized form in order to pay homage to it, but also in order to establish that ultimately the thing that is compelling about watching esports is this, the storylines of the players. That's the thing that is worth watching, worth tuning in for. So, animation style. Like I said, it's a 3D animated short, clearly, that's taking a lot of pains to look 2D animated. And so the interesting thing to talk about is how does it do that exactly? And I'm going to start trying to see if we can find a good frame for it. I think maybe that one. Yeah, so I've got it on 1440p. Because unfortunately, there's a hell of a lot of video compression on this thing. Um, especially in the action-packed moments, which is a little bit of a bummer. Um, but nonetheless, that's what we have to work with. So, the thing I feel like that makes this 
look painterly, like look like a, a, a 2D illustrated rendering, is its approach to lighting and texture. Um, and I wish I could zoom in so we could see probably, but for instance, take a look at the banner, the INTC banner that's hanging here, flapping in the wind. When it's not moving, what you get is the sense that rather than being a three-dimensional object, it's this thing that's composed rather of flat color surfaces overlaid on top of each other, which is the kind of uh, approach you would take to creating a look like this as a 2D illustration. And I do believe that in multiple places in the short, they are using um, flat 2D images in combination with 3D um, in combination with 3D animation in order to deliver the look. For instance, I would imagine that this, whatever the hell this is right here, and the fish bones that's lying on the ground, and a lot of the environmental objects in this scene are actually painted. Like, they are actually 2D illustrations that are, that are being moved in parallax and being moved around the characters in various ways in order to affect um, the look that they're going for. And that's... Um, Again, that's something that's kind of become a little bit of a hallmark of, of how Riot likes to do things. They really do like to do that sort of um, 2D, 3D animation hybrid where they take a 2D, uh, 2D, a flat 2D thing and place it into a 3D context and thus create a particular look. Here, for instance, you can also really see how the approach to lighting creates the painterly look that a lot of the animation has here. Now, because of... Uh, the fondness this short has for transitions that use camera shakes, it's why we get so much video compression on it, which is so annoying, because I want to look at the details, of course, but this is not something you notice when the thing is in motion. But the thing I, I look at here is see how the light shifts across his cape. And by the way, this is going to be... The enti this entire video is going to be stuff that's as nitpicky as this. Because I when I see animation like this, I always get fascinated by the little details, because... This cloak has to be a 3D object because of the way that the light is moving across it. But look at the softness of the edges of the light. And then sometimes how it transitions into these very hard light surfaces that move around. And they sort of... Sometimes I get the feeling like they're using multiple light sources in order to create the exact lighting outline that they want. Like how they want, for instance, here that little reflected light you've got here that separates the rim of the cape from Ambition's face so that the brown color of the cape and the, and the very sort of, because of the shadow, the very sort of dark color of his skin there don't exactly blend together. That kind of feels like they're, they, they're, play, they're tricking around with light sources a little bit in order to make sure that the illustrated look of the thing, you know, doesn't, doesn't accidentally blur together or get indistinct. And the backgrounds here are clearly matte paintings, uh, essentially. And that's, by the way, something that's really interesting in terms of um, this approach of mixing 3D animation with 2D media is that that's exactly like Star Wars, the original 1970, uh, 1978, 1978 or 9, the original episode 1, A New Hope, back when that was what it was called. Like, that's what movies like that back then used to be, is if you needed a, a complicated sci-fi background for something, you painted it like you just did a giant ass matte painting and put that in the background of your shot and then you kind of relied on the relatively low quality of the cameras and you know judicious use of lighting and, and stuff like that to make it appear real and that's kind of the same thing that's being replicated in some of these shorts nowadays where backgrounds and environments will be painted as 2d objects in order to achieve that that 2D effect, it's kind of the same thing as matte painting, really, which is something I find just, from, from, a, from a perspective of, of putting a short like this into the context of the history of film, I find that quite interesting, that, that essentially that 3D animators have kind of arrived back at the place where, where filmmaking kind of started, when it's like, okay, we need to create this environment that looks believably like it's this, this, like it's this exotic, cartoony environment from from this very specific place, and we need it. We need to interact believably with the characters. How do we do that? Well, essentially, we recreate the same technique that film studios used to use back in the fifties and sixties, in order to in order to create you know um, interesting backgrounds for their films, matte painting, and I I think that's quite funny. And again, I would imagine that the swords and stuff like that are also two D objects. In terms of the animation style, it's it's got a really lovely physicality to it. Like, when, when Ambition in particular moves, but when all of the characters in the short move, I get a believable sense of weight from them. And that's something that can be really difficult to do. Um, it's, in fact, it's one of the primary things I look for in a lot of animation is how well do they handle the weight of the character. Like, And with Ambition, and this is something that's also quite clever in terms of the storytelling, 
for the whole journey, Ambition is essentially walking as though he's got a great weight on his shoulders. Like you can see, he's kind of hunched over. He's using the staff to kind of drag himself forward. He's uh, pulling himself up the cliff. He's not like just sort of skipping ahead as though, ah, this is easy. La -da 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 -da. I'm climbing up the cliff because I'm so cool and I'm strong. And stuff. This is, he's constantly looking like he's putting a lot of effort, a lot of strength into it. And that, of course, is really important for the storytelling of the short, which is that thing of the struggle to get to the top kind of thing. Ooh, here's a point where you can really, I should actually, I should actually make this thing capture my mouse cursor. There we go. Here, over here, you can really see where the painterly style of, of painting the objects comes into play. And by the way, this is just such a fucking gorgeous shot. This, this you know, giant grasping stone hand in this field of wheat. And with the dramatic background, and I love the sense of scale that you get because you can see the river in the background just pacing away behind him and making Ambition look... He's both the, the, the dominating figure of the shot, which is kind of difficult to do because he's got the spear and he's this dark thing in a sea of gold. But he's also very small compared to the environments. And that's something that's consistent across this short, is that the characters are almost always tiny in comparison to the environments that they inhabit, which again is designed to give you the sense of this, you know, the, the titanic undertaking that it is to climb these giant environments, where the climb is a literal metaphor for climbing up the ranks, etc. etc. And like from a storytelling, visual storytelling perspective, that's just good. And by the way, once again, these straws of wheat right here are not 3D objects, at least not in the sense that they are 3D modeled with vertices and rigs and stuff like that. I would hazard a vague guess that all of these straws, um, the ones that are that are animated, are in fact 2D objects that are placed perhaps in a 3D plane, and then they are animated. I would imagine there's some algorithmic uh, animation going on there in the sense that um, the animators will tell the environment, okay, that a pressure wave is moving across the things in this order and then it's sort of propagating algorithmically because it would be impossible to animate each of these straws individually. But the straws themselves, at least as far as I can tell, are 2D objects. And that's that's why you get that, that which also helps with the believability of the movement because like if they had been full 3D objects, first of all, it would have ruined the painterly style, which, which relies on that kind of flat feeling. But also, because the straws are what they are, you can see they get this kind of sort of stiff, bouncy motion as they are just being deformed as 2D images. That works really, really well um, with just giving the sensation of the wind kind of pushing on these stiff plant objects. And I do love this transition. It's such a good way to do it, to establish the threat immediately. And by the way, yeah, something is easy to miss on the first time. He's shooting across the screen here. Or perhaps it's a, it's a leaf, who knows? But there is this big shadow that moves across the screen really quickly. Then we cut to Perks unsheathing his sword. And I do love the amount of detail that they've put into this, that the sword, like, it's Yasuo's sword, so it's old and it's chipped and it's damaged because that's what Yasuo's sword is like. And that serves a dual purpose in that it also communicates something to us about the tough journey that Perks has been on so far, that his weapon is literally damaged. And this is just such a clever cut. You can see how the, the sunlight begins to reflect on the blade here. Exactly where the sun is in the sky. Like, it's it, this is called affinity of continuum of movement in, in film studies terms, where in order to make sure that audiences don't get confused by a sudden cut, you will make sure that their eyes are fixated on something that remains consistent across the two frames. In this instance, it's the light glinting on the sword, transitioning into this moment of, you know, extreme wind kicking up all of a sudden, which again leans into the theme of Yasuo. And I'm interested about these trees, because I can't, because they are all black and white, I can't tell to what extent they are 3D objects. I would imagine, again, it's something like they've done a painting um, or, or a 2D illustration, then they're deforming it in 3D space, but I really couldn't tell, honestly. And again, every single shot in this damn thing is just well composed, I have to say. Like, because here, um, this transitional shot is chaotic. It's full of motion and movement, and it's kind of shocking and, and weird. And it's hard to get a hold of what you're seeing when you see it in real time. It's this sort of flurry of chaos all of a sudden, which is, again, is telling us how Ambition notices that, that Perks is there. is because there's this change in the environment around him, which is just, visual storytelling-wise, it's just really good. And here you can really see how um, how the straws are painted. Which is such a good way to do that. Like, 
Like doing a, a giant field of wheat, it's, it's the kind of thing that you'll see in 3D tech demos of some kind of, of advanced physics engine or something. Like, oh, we can render all of these physics objects in real time and make them move with with physics 3D modeling of, of the wind pressure and stuff like that. And all, it all looks very gorgeous. But to me, honestly, this is a better result. Like this, this looks more epic to me when you have these painted objects that are kind of, that look more flat, but also look in some ways more epic. And by the way, my credit to the modeling team behind trans translating the physical look of real life esports players into the these shorts, Portraiture is always difficult. Like, it's it's difficult in 2D, which is the medium where I usually do it, and it's even more difficult in 3D, because unlike what you might expect, you can't just do, like, a 3D scan of the dude's face and export that directly into your animation and expect that to work, because the face also needs to be conformed to the visual style of the rest of the world around him, which means you have to apply those same painterly illustration effect, illustration, illustration effects, let's put their stress in the right place there, illustration effects to the person in order to make him, in order to make him uh, match it. And they're doing some interesting stuff with lighting, especially on the characters' faces. I think I'll talk about that specifically with Ambition a little bit more later, because they're doing some interesting stuff with his glasses, using them to reflect light, which is also a clever way to obscure his identity. But that's something we'll get to a little bit later. For perks here... I mean, I will say, this looks like Perks aged up, maybe just a little bit, I guess. Maybe, maybe a little bit older, a little bit more rugged than he is in real life. I've, I've had the pleasure of watching him play a couple of times, and he, in real life, I think he looks younger than that. But again, that's kind of part of the visual storytelling here, is that we're not exactly dealing with the real person. We're dealing with a dramatization, essentially the legend of what happened on both of their journeys to worlds. And I love the way they're using the wind here, because you can see as Ambition Slam, and again, look at the, look, at, these are just like color blobs, right? Look at the way that the straws are, are, are animated here. They're just little blobs of color that are moving. They're almost like an ocean, which is what makes the whole scene look so cool, is that they're moving really, literally like water, like liquid. As Ambition slams the spear down, boom, there's a, there's a gust of wind that flies across, and that's such a good little detail because it communicates the impact of what is about to happen. I also love the foreshortening on the sword. Like, that's just a really cool foreshortening um, on the sword, which might be the 3D model. They might be distorting it intentionally, you know, to make it look more epic. I think they're doing that here, certainly, that, because if you can, if you look at, you can see as Ambition's hand comes into frame, I think there's some distortion going on. I think they're intentionally making these, as it, increasing the foreshortening, increasing the depth of field by distorting the model and making parts of it bigger as it enters into the frame, which is a really standard technique. It's something like, um, if you look at the Overwatch um, uh, highlights intros that you can you can get in that game, they do that all the time. They constantly distort the character model in order to heighten the depth of field to make it look cooler and more epic. And I think they're doing the same kind of thing here. Again, just look at, look at, it's just the field of wheat aesthetic that's going on here. It's just so good. And they, they are managing the colors of these straws really carefully because you can, see, you, can see, you can see you get this constant contrast of the very bright golden yellow of, of the straws versus the dark of the ground, which creates this dappled look to the environment, which is part of the reason why I think also that you have bright sunlight on the scene, but also stormy skies, because stormy skies gives you that dark, dull, gunmetal gray kind of thing going on, which provides this wonderful contrast, again, with the golden wheat fields, um, which, which does a lot to sell just the striking nature of the scene. And here comes the really cool part. So something I, I do quite enjoy is their use of motion smearing. As you can see, when, when, when Perks is approaching here, he's little more than just kind of a smear on the screen. Like, it's not the actual character model really moving across. It is a set of smears that communicates the speed with which he's moving around. And I love... Like, these seem to me to be hand animated. Like, these uh, light flashes and, and clash effects seem to me to be hand animated. And they replicate a very video game style version of how you know, how it would look if you did something like that in a video game. And I love, I love, as the hit lands, you can see the shockwave rippling out through the, 
through the fields of wheat. And again, I think this is really just, they just painted some brighter yellow colors and hand animated them flying away across the fields of wheat while using whatever physics engine that they're using to move the optics here. And here's what I'm actually quite curious as to whether the wheat straws are still 2D objects or whether they have now transitioned them into being actual 3D objects. If they did, rendering this many must have taken an absolute war on their processors. That must have taken so long. So, Perks charges forwards, pushing Ambition back, and in fact, for a moment, pushing his sword through him, which is quite brutal. And then we get this flash frame, and there's something really clever going on here, where you can see that Ambition is resisting the force, because you can see he's creating these little spikes in in the power, you know, the wave of power that Perks is generating. So you can, you can kind of see the resistance happening in a visual way, only if you stop and, and really frame by frame your way through, because obviously in motion, you barely get to see it, but it's just, it's so fucking anime. Like, this, these kinds of flash effects, these kind of fight uh, combat effects are completely directly lifted from anime, and that's why they work so well, is because they are from a medium that is designed to maximize impact on frames, and that's something that, especially this fight, but all of the fights are going to be doing over and over again, is using flash frames to really communicate the impact. And here is something else interesting going on, because I don't believe that the Perks character model we're seeing here is the same as the character model that we're seeing um, here. I think this is a different character model than... Let's see if we can find the shot again. Where did it go? We'll find it. We'll just go through until it shows up. Yeah. I think this is a different character model. I think this is a lower resolution character model. Um... Which makes sense in terms of because he's further away from the camera, so there's no reason to render him in such stark detail. But also that it helps maintain the painterly illusion. Because again, something that's consistent throughout this entire short is that objects that are further away will be less detailed than objects that are closer. You can kind of make out the individual little fibers of the straws up close here. But here in the back, they're just little blobs of color. And it's the same thing that's being applied to Perks' character model. That as long as we're not close up on him... It's a, it's a lower resolution version of him, or not so much a lower resolution, but a lower detail version, which helps, again, to improve the painterly look of the animation. That would be my theory, anyway. I also love the use of lighting effects. As you can see, when he gets ready to actually fight, boom, he lights up, or rather his sword specifically lights up. The fight animation is just really good. And here again, I'm reasonably confident that as this swings into frame, again, they're distorting the character model in order to improve the depth of field that's going on there. And I wouldn't be surprised if they're doing the same thing from this shot down here, which again, lovely Dutch angle going on here, like the Dutch angle where you, you, you tilt the camera in order to get a greater effect. Let's see. Anything interesting going on? Like, lots of interesting stuff, but this video is, like, already 23 minutes long, and maybe I should get a little bit of a fucking move on if I want to be able to actually also talk about <laughs> Uzi and Faker and all the other stuff that happens in this thing. So, here's a uh, common and useful technique in animation. Trace the motion of the weapon from the tip with these little color trails around. And that helps because when, when the action is as chaotic as it is, if there, if you didn't have those color trails to go by, it would be really hard to follow the motion of what the hell Perks is doing from that far up. Like, so, and especially since uh, the characters, as you can see, they're kind of dark against a dark background because the sunlight isn't over them. And so these bright flashes of light around really help sell the power and the impact of the action as it's going on. Oh, this is such a good shot. Like, all of these shots are just really well composed. And then motion blurring as he heads into the screen, which again is is a really classic animation. Ooh, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. As Ambition goes uh, stealth mode with Kha'Zix's abilities, you see the, the, the um, motion streaking? that's going on in order to transition him out again. Again, completely borrowed from anime and really, really, really effective. And I also love um, the rotational motion that comes up here, right? As you can see, his figure finally completely disappears. That rotational motion leads us into the moment when 
perks cut a cuts across it, and we get this epic slow motion shot of him realizing, uh oh. And again, we're back to the very high detail character model again, because we need the expression on the character's face in order to really sell the moment and the power of what's going on. And again, brilliantly composed shot with the lightning bolt and the shadows of the two characters in the background. That's really well done. Also, uh, I don't remember Worlds last year so well, so if anyone knows why Kennen's um, shuriken shows up here and then turns into an arrow pointing towards the mountain, did Uzi play Kennen at some point? Because it feels like this is setting up the Uzi fight. Anyway, Ambition's Glasses. This is, again, lifted straight wholesale out of anime, which is like where you have the Megane character who was, like, when they're in darkness and their glasses, for some reason, are shining, um, which is such a clever way to... Because his entire face is mostly in shadow here, except for like a slight hint of his mouth down this slight little light on his nose bridge there. The the light on the glasses helps us identify where he's looking and where his face is turned at, at any given moment in, in these dark shots, which is a really quite quite a clever way to do it. I also, again, speaking of motion effects, the characters that are trapped in the ice, because you have this motion blurring, effect that goes this way across you get the sensation that they're falling even though they're trapped in ice which again like visual storytelling once again this, these are people who have fallen who have not made it to the top i don't know if that's a specific player that they've trapped in there which it would be kind of cruel to do but nonetheless quite fun and again look how they're using the reflection in ambition's glasses to kind of set the scene as he exits the cold of winter in order to enter you know the <laughs> from from the from the frying pan into the fire is that what we're going with his glasses light up red in order to reflect the environment in front of him and oh something else to notice as the bats are shooting out of the cave at great speed in order to heighten the speed in order to really heighten the the sense of motion in the bats you can see how the models are being distorted and kind of um you can see these these uh, horizontal streaks going across them, and that really helps sell the power and the speed with which they're moving. I do like that Uzi and Ambition are facing off in a literal magma chamber. I don't know if that's an intentional reference <laughs> to the poor cancelled magma chamber, but it's nonetheless a fun one. So, let's see. Details that are worth noticing in here. Um, I believe the lava is hand-animated. As you can see, it's spilling up from under his feet. Let's see, there's a big one coming at some point later over here. As Uzi fires his arrows, I think there's a big lava splash that comes up. There we are. Yeah, these are hand animated, and you can see they're moving. So, one frame ahead, you can see Ambition is moving, but the lava plume isn't changing one frame ahead the lava plume changes then ambition gets to move an extra frame then the lava plume changes then ambition gets to move an extra frame and that's that that frame offset is a clever way to oh that's so good um to really sell uh the, the feeling of the scene that these things are not happening synchronously that they that, that you're getting a little bit more chaos going on in there something i've talked about many times before when i do animation analysis and i just love how all of this is composed and put together. Like, it's just the craftsmanship that's on display here is just brilliant. And I really do especially love... You can see um, the figure of Uzi tumbling as he faces off against the giant Sejuani. And this Sejuani thing here is entirely hand animated. And it's like fucking Ganon from Legend of Zelda just charging the hell at you. And then you can see here poor Uzi's face. <laughs> as he gets trampled and Ambition literally jumps through lava. And again, you can see how they're using the light reflection on his glasses to locate his face, even though he's barely more than a silhouette. <laughs> and again, gorgeous, gorgeous shots. And again, notice the sense of weight that's constantly on Ambition's movements, that he's never just kind of... He has to pull himself up, like... Argh! Pull himself over the ledge, because this is a hard climb, and that's consistent and I like that. That's good. By the way, the visual aesthetics of the surroundings in which they're battling run an interesting gamut because the Golden Fields of Wheat is something we've seen in another animated short, specifically Legends Never Die from last year. And that was something where, that was a place where Garen was fighting. So it kind of felt like this 
represented Demacia in some way, whereas we start out in the desert, which looks a lot like Shirima. And then as we move further, um, we get into what could be the Freljord. Uh, admittedly, it could also represent Marn Targon, if you so want it. And then we get this magma chamber, which I'm not sure if that represents anything but the, a reference to the cancelled magma chamber map. And then we get into this environment with these floating rocks that are flying around, these very so tall, deformed trees that looks extremely Ionian to me. Which is also something like this. The final battle arena with Faker feels like it's modeled mostly after Summoner's Rift, but the the look of the trees in the map gives me kind of an Ionian feeling. So I think there's a little, a few little references to the various different, you know, world aesthetics of the League of Legends universe itself. And again, just such an impressive piece of modeling work to get a portrait of Faker that looks like him without just being a literal translation of, of, of his actual physical features. <laughs> this is such a cool shot. And I do like how they're kind of connecting uh, Faker and Ambition through the, the way, through the glasses that they're both wearing. You can see Ambition reflected in Faker's glasses here. It's just such a nice shot. And again, with the light locating Ambition's eyes for us, we can kind of see them right behind here, but like anchoring the face as it slowly lights up. And here again, these are 2D illustrations um, that are being projected into the 3D space, which is just a really clever way to do it. And here, absolutely the coolest shot of the whole thing. Faker going full Super Saiyan mode. But I do love, like, here's another thing about creating character models like this, distorting the face like this, also like they do on Perks when, when he has his fight scene with Ambition. Like, there's a lot of distortion. There's a lot of, you can see that there are lines forming around the edges of the mouth to really kind of uh, communicate the clenched teeth. And you can see the teeth are unnaturally long, um, which which makes the, the clenched, you know, the, that clenched jaw look even more, stand out even more. In real life, rarely do people look like that when they're clenching their teeth, even if they're, you know, pulling their lips back. And here's where we just, just go full anime on it. Like, this is just, this is a classic anime explosion. Look at that. Look how it balloons outwards. By the way, there's a great new video um, on explosions in video games. I'm going to link to that down below uh, by Dan Root. And you should, you should go and watch that because that will tell you something about how they make the explosions and the explosion effects in this thing work as well as they do. I love that. I love the ripping of the sleeve. This is just so good. Like, I just want to gush over this now. I think we've done enough nitpicking over the animation. I just kind of want to gush over it. And again, look at all the distortion, like how much they deform the face, how much they kind of, they push the lips out. They they rear them back. You got lines going on the face. You got the cheekbones showing through there, which is something that in 3D animation can be really, really hard to do, especially when you have to keep a likeness, like especially when you're doing a portrait of a character and you have to keep their likeness relatively Understandable. Again, with the, ex the the complete anime explosion effects, look at this. I love the little blink that they give Faker, like right before he teleports, blink, blink, whoop, and then gone. And again, distort the face in, like, that's a hell of an expression on him right there, isn't it? and then distort it into a, a proper roar. And more explosions! And just this epic, all the clouds, poof, being kicked up by the shockwave. It's just so good. It's, it's just really well done. And really clever little transition there to show the page of Ryze's book kind of being stuck to one of the pillars. As you can see, the embers of the fire swirling away. And again, we're looking at different frame rates. You can see how things are not quite moving on the same timings, which again helps sell the, the, the fluidity and the three-dimensionality of the scene. And then this clever, clever reveal, where at last the disguise that has otherwise been... I mean, we all knew who the hell he was. If if you follow esports, you're gonna, you, you will have sussed out that it's ambition long before this point. But it is a lovely little epic reveal of the Galaxy logo finally taking out his longtime rival. And again, with the heavy distortions on the character model to really sell the power and the impact of the expression.
And I think it's a really clever conceit to have this arena where the name is carved into the arena, you know, with, with every victory. And again, this shot, like the sun just peeking over the clouds as the logo lights up and Ambition standing there, just a really good shot. And we finally get a look at his character model specifically. And I really do love how these things are rendered. Like, there's a lot of 2D... Uh, there's a lot of painterly textures being applied over the top of the character model that are doing a lot of the work of selling the physicality of his face and the likeness. And <laughs> look how much cheekbone they gave him. And again, like, in order to make the expression even readable at a scale like this, look how wide his mouth is open. Like, that's... Normal humans would struggle to open their mouths quite that wide. And I do love this transition. Like, this is just a really clever transition to use the rotational motion to rotate the camera into view as we see a member of Gambit Gaming, as far as I can tell, climbing up. I don't know if that's supposed to be Diamond. I don't think he plays Darius a lot, but if it's Darian, he's not been in the game for a long time. I haven't followed Gambit for ages, so I don't even know who the hell the roster is anymore. Oh, I miss them in the ULs, yes. Oh, well. And here we get the... Because, like, this is not what the environment looked like at the start of the short. This is an exaggerated environment, a highly exaggerated environment. So, to showcase, we have the Magma Chamber here, we have the Icy Peaks here, we have um, um, the, the, the wet forest that he climbed through briefly over here. All of these environments that were sort of represented coming back to us again, showing us that there are more people out on that same path climbing up to try and meet him. A little bit of Flash Wolves there. I don't know who that is. We've got Liquid here, and Fnatic coming for another World Championship. We're going to win this year. I swear to God we're going to win. Just Fnatic's going to take it. Quote me on that. That's my prediction. It's not my prediction. Uh, anyway, that was a hell of a long breakdown video, and I didn't even cover half of what I wanted to talk about. But I do love the little teaser for Uzi here, kind of setting him up as perhaps the primary challenger for this year, which is not unfair. I mean, Uzi has waited his turn. I think he, he has gone long enough without a world championship to his name. He's got a decent chance this year. Unless, of course, Fnatic beats him. I really want them to beat them. <laughs> I really want it, but it's not going to happen, probably. But I will believe, and I will cheer for it, and I will hope for it. Anyway, I have rambled on for quite long enough. There's a million billion other things that I could also talk about, as indeed you can tell from how long this fucking video is. But I'm going to cut it off here and say that if you have enjoyed this video, you should feel very free to hit the like button down below. And you can also subscribe to the channel if that's what you like. YouTube, YouTube, you've heard this before. You know what I'm going to say. It's YouTube, like, subscribe, do the thing, leave a comment, blah, 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 all of that stuff. If you are also so inclined, I do have a Patreon where if you have a dollar and I really, you really, I really don't ask anyone for any more than, than they're able to give. So if you have a dollar that you don't need and you don't mind, it really does help out me or other creators like me. Like, I also want to encourage, like, if you have other YouTube creators or just creators in general who you like and they have, like, Patreon campaigns, a dollar is a lot to one of us. Like, because, like a dollar is, like, the same as, like, a thousand views on a YouTube video. So, like, if you have a creator out there that you like, uh, who, you, who, you, who you want to support, like, a dollar is more than enough. Like, it's a big help in the grand scheme of things. It really genuinely is. So... If you want to support me, if you want to support anyone else, I heartily encourage you to go and do it. Because, frankly, sites like Patreon and, and uh, you know, coffee and PayPal donations and stuff like that are much more reliable as income sources than YouTube is these days. And I've seen a lot, I've seen a number of friends have trouble, you know, navigating the algorithm and just getting views on their videos. Because YouTube is, is the way to... Anyway, that's not really what I'm supposed to be talking about here. Anyway, support creators... In general. Me, maybe, but also like other people. Uh, I kind of lost track of my th train of thought here. Oh, right. There's a dislike button. Dislike buttons. Did you know those existed? Yeah, they, they are here. And they are there for the express purpose of if you have watched the video this far, for some reason, and you have decided that you do not like it, well, there's a dislike button down below that can tell YouTube that you do not like this video and you do not want to watch more of it. Now... My dislike button, unfortunately, the one I've got down here is like, it's just kind of a fake. Um, I won it in a tournament last year, and I've just been keeping it on display, but the tournament is coming around again, and if um, I want to have a dislike button on my videos, I'm gonna have to go and earn it. So, I mean, and if I've got it, you can't click on it, because it's my dislike button. So if I go and win this tournament, 
you can't have it. And uh, I'm going to be going into training in like a magical chamber where time passes more slowly so I can get 10 years of training done in like one day. And then I'm going to come up with superpowers and I'm going to go to this tournament and I'm going to beat up like a vast array and roster of colorful villain characters and rivals who will eventually come with me on grander adventures out there in the universe. Anyway, if you want to click on the dislike button, you will have to enter that tournament yourself. Now, I should warn you um, that there are no weapons allowed in the tournament. It's only martial arts, so you should practice your key skills. Uh, if you can learn to fly, there's going to be a big advantage because if you fall out of the ring, you know, that's just a disqualification and there's going to be like a lot of people who can just, who can punch you a great distance. So be careful of that. Um, but beyond that, like, so... You know, if you want to click the dislike button, I will see you at the World Martial Arts Tournament. Hadouken! Why the fuck did I say Hadouken? <laughs>